Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. I have my, I would call you my best friend, but I called Ryan that last week, and then I felt like I would lie. But for right now, okay. in this moment, he's, he's, he won't he won't care. You're my best friend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming back. Round yeah, two for you, yeah, man. I appreciate two. it. And guess what? I got a lot of feedback from you being here the first time. Really? I don't know if you paid people. But I kept getting text messages like, man, what you guys talked about. I don't know if it's our subject bitterness, but I felt like it was great. So thank you. So, man, I fished. I let you like fishing. I, I reeled you back in. Thank you. Would you come back? And you said. I said yes. And you got a haircut. I got a haircut. Yeah, for the Bible just reading for project. The Bible reading I love project. it. Who does your hair? Uh, Wendy. Here oh, at the church. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Shout out to Wendy Daniel. Boom. Thank you, Wendy, for making him look different. Yeah. I would say handsome, but that's awkward. So thank you. And Not thank really. you for shaving your mustache. That's just a beard. I don't know why people do that. Jonah chapter one, all week long. Jonah. So man, you ready to dive into Jonah? Ready. 16 verses. And uh, man, the purposes of God. So all week long, we're going to talk about the purposes of God. Here's what I do want to talk about though. The book of Jonah, uh, having the right heart, but going the wrong direction. In other words, God has purposes for your life. And the purposes he has for your life can conflict with our feelings, can conflict with my bucket list, God steps into the equation and says, hey, I want you to do this. And they're like, mm, I don't know about that. Right. And so I, in my own life and other Christians too, I, I know people love the Lord and love God, but then I've never met a person yet that God hasn't called or asked something that is kind of off the radar. And I don't know if that's to test our faith. I don't know what it is. Let's just jump in. I'm going to read all 16 verses, which is what I do on Monday and then give you a thought to think about all week long. I'm going to do a New Living Translation, if that's all right, Perfect. this week. Verse 1, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. But, and this is kind of what we're talking about all week, verse 3, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted, get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. And then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused a terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why was this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What's your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why Why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded. Do not make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. O Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped all at once, and the sailors were all struck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I like God, man. You know, he just gets ticked at you like, yeah. what a send a storm. We'll send a storm. A All big, right, so here's world. here's the thought. First, my when I read it, you know, pondering what we're going to do this week, because we're trekking with our Sunday service, or Sunday sermon. So we're in the book of Genesis, and this just fits really well with this week's day five in the book of Genesis. But um, does it not amaze you that the guys serving the false God had more faith and passion for their God than Jonah had his? Right. Yet Jonah's own comment of himself is, I'm a Hebrew who worships God. Right. But zero life impact. Right. He knew his identity. Oh, absolutely. He just was like, nope, I'm going in the opposite direction. Right. 
And so that's kind of what I want to hold on to all week. Right. I want to hold on when God speaks into our lives something I don't want to hear, uh, wants something out of me that I don't want to give, and how if I'm not careful, my own thinking about myself um, can skew me being really used by God. Uh, If you go all the way to Jonah 4, the reason Jonah's running is he's, he's not running because he's afraid of Nineveh. He's running from Nineveh because he knows how good God is. And he says, you're going to go tell me to tell them they're going to be judged, but I know how good you are. You're going to forgive them, and then I'm going to look like an idiot, and you're going to ask something out of me that's going to make me look like a dummy. And I think that's a lot of times we get fearful with God because if I really run hard after him, he's going to ask something out of me that's going to make me like a dummy. I wrote this down for today. God, uh, the reason a lot of people go the wrong direction is God wants something from me that I'm not willing to let go of. He's asking something of me that just, I I don't want to forgive that person. I don't want to, uh, you know, give that offering. I don't, I don't want to, whatever the want to is, uh, because it's, it's threatening Mm -hmm. when God asks something of you that is not part of your bucket list or your dream or your passion. So I want you to ponder that. I want you to think about what is it in your life as we go through this week has God ever requested something out of you that made you scratch your head and go, I have no clue what he's doing, and how did you handle it, and how did you walk through it? Because what I want to talk about all week is this thing about the right heart in the wrong direction. It, a lot of times I love the Lord, but man, like Jonah, uh, and I find that too with people. You know, I find that a lot of times I'm passionately in love with Jesus, but no impact at all in my surroundings. Mm -hmm. You know, that these guys on the boat serving false gods are more passionate about Jonah's God than Jonah is himself. Because once the the waves and the wind stop, uh, they offer God a sacrifice. They will serve you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've often found, man. If I'm not willing to let God use me, God will find somebody else. Right. You know, and so there's a lot going on in this chapter this week, man, from from purposes. God has a purpose on our life to uh, distractions from those purposes to people Mm -hmm. who influence me to my own perceptions because Jonah's own perception. You're just too good of a God to tell me to go tell him to repent because you're going to make me look like a dummy. And so all of that this week, man, from perceptions to purposes to uh, God asking things. That's just what I want to dig out. So, uh, hey, we ask you to come back the rest of the week. And look, it's just 16 verses this week, but man, it's packed good. And if you want to just be bold, read all of Jonah all week because it is amazing what you will dig out from a guy who says of himself, I worship God. I'm a Hebrew who worships God, but my life's going into the wrong direction. That's what I want to ask you today. It's a Monday. Hey, you may have a lot of good opinions about yourself, but is your life going the right way? Are you fulfilling the purposes of God? Or are you just chasing your own dreams and fantasies, hoping God along the way will bless you? And really, other people are making more impact on the planet than you and have more faith in the God you have, and yet you're the Christian. So I want to dig that out today. Hey, I bless you, Derek, and I bless you, man. Derek, thanks again for hanging with me all week. And as I always say, this is the way we end it. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And if anybody comes across my path today that needs you, may I ever be so bold to lead them to you. Have a good day.